Welcome enamel enthusiasts. This is going to be a very quick two-part video and I'm going to show you how I use the kit that I have for sale on Etsy to do my grinding, polishing, and finishing. Of course, you do not need to purchase the kit. It's just a little intro package that includes everything that you need. You can certainly buy all these components separately and it will not hurt my feelings. But if you do decide to purchase the kit, here is a link to it. And for this project, we will also be using a diamond sanding stick that I also have on Etsy as well. And here is a link to that. I thought that it would be very nice to use this pair of earrings that I have a uh, customer ordered these a couple days ago, a couple, I think maybe on Christmas and I'm ready to polish these and get them on their way. And how do I know when I'm ready to grind and polish is the first thing that I'm thinking of. And I know because see if I turn it this way and I, I can see that I can rub my finger over the piece, I've got the enamel pretty much all the way up and I can still feel the wires a little bit, but the enamel is all the way up to the top of the, the wires for the most part. And if you think you're ready for grinding and polishing, go ahead and have a look. If you see wires really kind of jutting out, um, you might run into problems in the first grinding um, pass in that if the wires are really kind of sticking out of the enamel kind of like this, when you go to grind them, they might have a tendency to bend over and really embed themselves into the glass, uh, which kind of gives you kind of a fuzzy looking line and um, it's, it's harder to deal with. So if you feel that your enamel is sticking out, you're going to be pretty much grinding out that layer anyway. Go ahead and put another coat of clear enamel so you have a nice, fairly even, smooth top to your enamels. But if we are ready, and we're all ready to enamel, we should get started. Let me tell you, this is this first part of the video is going to be using the basic kit that I offer. And the basic kit will get you all the way to a fire polish. And that is perfect for small pieces, uh, little earrings. I do a lot of just a really nice fire polish is, is a lot of times all you need to get a beautiful enamel. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. And included in the, the basic kit are, uh, we'll start with the order that we're gonna be using them in. Um, this is a diamond, a one inch diamond sanding disc. It is 360 grit. And you can see it's attached to the mandrel with Velcro. Nice, uh, because you can get, it, they're easy change and it's a really convenient thing. This is not a small mandrel. If you have, this is this particular mandrel is unavailable um, in the quick change. So just a mental note, this is a 1 8 inch shank. Um, so you'll need to use your traditional size um, handpiece for this uh, with your Fordham tool or Dremel. Um, so that's the first thing that we have. And then we have two grits of regular sanding discs. This is 60 micron, 60, there we go, and 40 microns. And then we have an additional uh, rubber mandrel that is just plain, it doesn't have anything, um, and these will stick right on that. And so we've got those two things. And then following up with that, we just have two two grits of sandpaper. We have gray, 600 grit, and 1200 in the blue, and two just little basic sanding sticks. Um, also included in the kit for your reading edification, um, all of my instructions in pretty great detail um, of how we're going to do this as a, as a good reminder um, to the video. In addition, we are going to be using, um, this is optional for a smaller piece, this is totally optional. Um, this is a diamond um, sanding stick and it has the same thing it's attached with velcro it is exactly the same material as is on this um, but this just gives me a little bit of control when I'm trying to smooth things over not as important in a small piece like this but if you're working on any larger pieces you may want to also invest in the sanding stick so without further ado let's get started and get these wonderful sweet little earrings ready to go. In addition to 
the kit. You'll need a few household items to get started. I like to use a regular tea towel. I like to put down a nice, as you can see, I've used this one before, a, a, not a fluffy towel, but just a nice plain tea towel that you don't mind destroying because it will definitely get destroyed. I've got that. I've got some nice, clean, regular tap water and some paper towels ready for drawing. Um, and also very important, um, a respirator mask because anytime you're using a power tool to remove enamels, especially if it's leaded enamels, but either way, you're gonna want, if you can find one of these, an N95 mask. Um, so, and you're always gonna wear that when, if you're doing hand, if you're doing it by hand, it's maybe not quite as necessary, but anytime you are working with a power tool, you definitely wanna be wearing protection. Um, also, you can't see it, I am going to be using my um, uh, Fordham tool, which is here is it ready to go. Uh, but also a Dremel or any kind of a, a rotary tool will be just fine. And so we've got our pieces. And the first thing that we want to do is uh, remove all of the extra glass on the top. We're not doing any polishing, uh, but I mean, so you can see there's glass all over the silver. This is a Charmelevee piece. And we want, and you can see how kind of lumpy it is. It's probably a little bit of glass over these wires. We're just going to remove that very first layer. And we're going to use our diamond sanding disc for that. And we're going to use a lot of water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip the piece in the water and just get started and find the pedal here. Go in nice and slow. Watch your fingers. And I'm starting in the middle. So I do a little bit and then I dip. A little bit and the good news about this this um, 380 grit is it, it'll take a while to really overdo it but you want to be careful not to go once I get the center of this piece I'm not gonna go back to the center because that's where you run into troubles every time you come back you go into the center and come center come you're gonna overdo the center um, which you want to avoid. So once I've gotten the center, I'm going to avoid going back. I'll go just shy of the center. And we're just going to go evenly all the way around. There we go. And if you want to check to see how you're doing, because when it's wet, you know, everything looks kind of glossy. Uh, you can get some more paper towels and give it a little dry. And what you're looking for, we're not anywhere near there yet. Um, you're looking for the whole piece to be have a matte finish. See, you have a matte finish right here, but it's glossy. You can see there's still tons of glass on that. But what we want is, you, it's perfectly done right in here, and you want to make sure that the silver wire work is exposed. See how it's exposed right here, but it's still kind of buried underneath some glass. It's not shiny right here. So that's what you're looking for. And, um, you know, take your time. There's no, this is not something that we want to rush. It, this is part of the, the process, and it should be, it is a grind, but it is pleasurable and fun if you can get in the moment with it. We are almost there. I've dried it off and I can see sometimes when you dip it in the water, it's hard to remember where you need to be grinding. I've got a Sharpie and I can see that right here, see this when I hit the light, you can see there's a little bit of glass still on that silver. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it with the Sharpie. So I know the little areas is a little bit right here that I need to get, maybe a little bit right there. Don't worry, the Sharpie will never, you know, if it will it will disappear 
forever. You don't have to worry about it staying on your piece. So you can see where the last little bits that I'm going to just focus on and then we'll be done with this with this particular little guy. But you can dip it in and you can still see where we need to go. There we go, that's looking real good. All right, and so I'm gonna go ahead and do that exact, I haven't done anything with the edges yet, don't worry about the edges yet, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that exact same thing to this piece. So this was the before, and here is the after, and I will be right back. There we go. Now I want to get the top and the top just a little bit because I can feel it's not perfectly, you can't even, you probably can't even tell that it's not perfectly flat, but I can feel a little ridge. And so I got some water and I'm just going to hold it on the edge and just kind of smooth out the top. Move that out of the way. Don't need to drip on the microphone. There we go. And it doesn't take much time, but I am actually using a certain amount of elbow grease with this. Um, you can overdo it with this, but we're not quite in that danger zone. So there we go. That is not when I, when I feel it, it feels nice and smooth, like a river rock. So that I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to this piece, and then we will move on to the next step. All right, before we move on to the next step, um, just a quick note. This kind of gets all, both of these, after a good grind, um, are really dirty. And if you throw these back into your toolbox or wherever you're holding this, when this dries, it's going to turn into a dust. And there could be lead in here, but it's something you don't, you want to always try to keep the dust down in your studio. And so before I put any of these back in my tool things, I'm going to either dip it in the water or get a damp paper towel and just wipe any enamel residue. Um, and you will try, you'll be, you'll thank yourself because the next day you'll be like, why is everything just covered in like dust? Um, it's because take a moment and then you are good to go. Um, perfect. So now we can store those safely. And the next step is we are going to be using, these are, we're not, because we're gonna do a fire polish, I'm not actually going to worry so much about the glass anywhere because we're going to put this back in the kiln. We melt the glass. It's going to get shiny. It's all going to be really nice. And so right now I'm worried about all the little scratches in these little exterior silver bits. Um, and we're going to take care of those. Um, we're going to start out with the 60 micron sanding disc and the rubber mandrel. And they just peel off like that and they just stick right on like that. Now these sandy discs have a three star rating because a lot of people on RioGrande.com uh, because a lot of people after they stick their standing disc on here they dip the mandrel in the water and if you do that the disc will completely fall off. It'll lose its stickiness and you're not, it's not going to restick until this mandrel is completely dry. And so that's why it has, everyone's like, oh, they just keep falling off. You know, that's, you know, when I dip it in the water, it falls off. So don't dip this in the water. You're going to dip your piece in the water. And then if this gets wet, you know, it's good to have kind of a spare mandrel or two, just in case you accidentally dip it in the water uh, and you're, you're out for the, the afternoon. Uh, but don't dip this in the water. 
dip this in the water and you will have no problems with these not sticking to your mandrel. Um, so we're dipping that in the water and I'm just gonna gently go over the, um, the middle part because there are wires that I wanna shine up as well, but with a very light touch, um, I don't wanna grind any goo or crud into my enamel. So a light touch here and then a firmer touch all the way around. There we go. And just use a lot of water. Oh, there we go, find my foot pedal. So light touch. And now it's the time to double check that your wires are exposed. Um, they should look nice and white and shiny. All right, I'm ready to switch. And we just peel this off. And you don't have to throw this away because it's still sticky. And I usually just kind of stick it to the edge of my desk and come back to it if I need to. Um, there we go, stuck to the edge. And we're gonna get the 40 micron next. Let's see if we can peel a good one off. There we go. And these will last longer. If you use the more water you use, the longer they'll last. It's kind of a dry sanding that's gonna wear them down pretty fast. So we're gonna do the exact same thing, but with the 40 micron. All right, we are in the home stretch. We are going to switch to some polishing papers. I'm going to start with the gray polishing paper, which I believe is 600 grit. Take one of those and get this out of the way. And I'm just using a regular sanding stick. I'm just gonna wrap it around just like that. And again, we're gonna use the edge of the table. So let me adjust. See, this is why it's not, you're not using your best tea towels here. Um, <laughs> they, you know, I do tend to, you know, I'll launder these and they last quite a bit, but you will get some holes eventually, especially if you get aggressive with your sanding. And so I'm going to use the edge of the table again. Let me adjust so you can see that. And I am just going to go over the whole thing just like that. And you're going to be looking for any scratches that are not going to, if you see a scratch that gets exposed to you with this, you're gonna backtrack. You're gonna maybe go back to the blue, go back to the 60 micron, and then if you, whatever you go back to, you have to come back through incrementally, not over the whole thing, but just in the one area. Some days it's a dance, and you're like, I'm never gonna get all of these little scratches out. But um, the trick is actually um, use the edge of the table, don't do this, that's not good. This will take you five hours, maybe not five hours, but you know, and I'm supporting the piece with my finger. So I'm not sticking, cause you know, it has a little bit, it's not perfectly flat. And so if I were to set it flat on the table and just ooh, go at it, I could crack it. So I'm using just the edge and I'm supporting it with the fleshy part of my finger. And that allows me to put, you know, a fair amount of pressure on here. And it's not, we're not gonna take that much time. Um, this is, a small little piece. All right, let's have a look. All right, these look really good. Let's see if we can maybe dry them off and have a look at them. Nice. See how they, I don't see any scratches. The edges are nice and clean. The back is clean. All right, we are before, and I've got the kiln is heating up. I have my kiln set for 1430. Fahrenheit, which is 776 Celsius, and that is just about coming to temperature. But before I put these back in the kiln, I really want to wash them with soap and water because, you know, there's a lot of dirt and, and junk that we want to make sure is not still on the enamel. And so let's walk over to the sink 
and give these a little wash. Oh. All right, I have, this is just a regular natural bristle brush that I bought. It's not expensive. I cut the edges off so it has a nice edge, but you can use a plain toothbrush would be fine. And then just a little bit of Dawn dishwashing liquid that I have right here. I'm gonna go ahead and actually make a little pile right there. It doesn't take much. Um, and then clean water. And I'm just gonna scrub it on both sides and rinse it. There you go. And I do because I've got kind of not the best water in the studio. Um, I'm gonna then rinse these with some distilled water. Um, I've got distilled water right here and I'm just going to see if I can, there we go. Rinse them with distilled and then dry them really well with paper towel. And we are ready to fire polish these. All right, we're going to let this fire polish for about two minutes. You can see when I put it in the kiln, it dropped to 1274 Fahrenheit. Generally speaking, um, by the time it works its way back up to 1430, um, I usually give it 10 seconds beyond that because I call this, this particular kiln's name is Clicky. <laughs> He'll start clicking when he hits um, back up to temperature. About 10 seconds after that should be just fine. All right, we're back up to 1430. And there's my click. So that's kind of like my audio and every kiln is different. My other kiln doesn't do the clicking as much. Um, it's been about 10 seconds, and I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. All right. And I find that it's important for a good fire polish. Don't be, I know the inclination to kind of fuss with it, with the, the you know, poke at it, jostle it. Just let it cool down in its own sweet time. It's only gonna take a couple of minutes, um, but you just wanna make sure that the area around the kiln is very clean and dust free and um, you'll be fine. So we'll let that cool and we'll see what we got in a moment. All right, these are nice and cool. These look just lovely. The last thing that I would do, I'm not gonna do it because we're going to, in the next video, I'm going to crack open the deluxe kit and we're gonna take this to a little bit more finalized polish, but this is looking great. And if I was just gonna, if I was ready for this to be done, I could put this into the tumbler for about 45 minutes with some steel shot, or just give it a little polish with a, a little hand polish, put some ear wires on and you are, good to go and so there that thus ends the part the first part of this tutorial and in the next tutorial we're gonna we're gonna take it beyond the fire polish part two the, the new and improved beyond the fire polish uh, i've changed the way i do things a little bit um, since the very first beyond the fire polish years ago and we will um see what's new in that world. But anyway, thank you so much for supporting me on my Vimeo channel. And again, if you're interested in purchasing the kit, it is on my Etsy store. Again, take care and have a great day, everybody. Thanks.